more less code of pattern match function. The code when we have uh, we have written last chapter, I am going to just read out that code. A less language, the pattern match function has been defined with three arguments: pattern, input, and third argument is optional. B, which is by default, it is true. Yes. We had already written that code. You don't need to note down this code. I'm just rewriting that code. In the con statement, we have four classes. Third argument B is nil. Then return nil. Nil means false. The answer will be false. If the answer variable is false, then nil will be returned. False will be returned. The second class equal P and I. Pattern and input are exactly equal. They are same. Then we are return the binding. The answer will be answer variable will be returned. In the fourth, uh, third class, we are calling a function. Our function we have to discuss its functionality right now. That variable p, the pattern is uh, the first argument pattern is a variable, logical variable. Then if it is a logical variable, then call the match variable function on pattern. Input and binding. Third class is complete over here. This is the third class principle complete over here. Then in the default class, in the last class, we want to check whether both of its arguments p, i, or less using bit and less function, less p function. We want to check whether P argument, I argument, both these are less. This is the condition of the last class. If both these are less, then it comes to a pattern match on cutter of P, cutter of I, and third argument of this pattern match function is the recursive call of the same function, pattern match function, on cutter of P. Car of I and B. This is the third argument of this pattern match call, which is ending over here. Then the last class is ending over here. Then the different con and different statements. Now there are two functions before tracing this pattern match function. There are two functions which are being called in this pattern match definition. When we should be understanding. One is the variable p function, the second is the math variable function. These are our functions, programmer defined functions, we are be understanding their functionality. Okay? The math variable, variable p function is basically our function to check whether its argument is a variable or not. In pattern matching, logical variable is a special symbol which can match with any one thing. Logical variable is a symbol which can match with one item. Exactly one item. That item, that element can be a number, that can be a list, that can be a symbol, but it should be one thing. Okay? And the convention for the logical variable is that it is a symbol, one symbol, starting with Starting with question mark. So whenever this variable p function will get a symbol with question mark, it will return true. On everything else, on everything else, it will return false. So now suppose if I pass question mark x, it will return the actual argument. The code will be removed, the actual argument will be question mark x, and it will return true. Similarly, the variable p function. When it is called on question mark, let's say A, B, C. A, B, C is the one symbol, okay? And this variable symbol is starting with the question mark, so it is a logical variable. In matching, it can match with one symbol, it will be matching with one symbol, so variable P function will return true. On anything else, if I pass variable P, let's say I pass symbol A. Any symbol, it will return false, and as a false and less, nil will be returned. Similarly, if I pass variable p function, the list containing 
a logical variable. What is the expected answer? It will return nil. Yes, its argument is not a symbol, its argument is a list. Although the variable is inside the list and it is the only element inside the list, but it is not a symbol itself. It is a list, it is not a logical variable. Variable P function will return nil. So this is the functionality of the variable P function. Now we want to discuss the functionality, the behavior of the, the algorithm of the match variable function. The match variable function, Alibaba, can you tell me how many arguments are you getting that variable function? Three arguments, yes, P, I and B. Three arguments are being passed to the match variable function and I'm going to write an algorithm in the form of a flow chart over here, the match variable function. Math variable functions, I am not going to write the less code, I am just going to write the flow chart. The math variable function is getting three arguments, P, I and B. And in the function definition of math variable, variable function, names of these arguments are variable, value and binding list. Variable, value and binding. The first argument, P, is being named as variable in the math variable function because when this math variable function is being called in the third class of pad math function, you see this condition. When this condition will be true, only then the math variable function will be called. Math variable function is getting P and this P is a Variable. In the condition part, it has been already checked. When it will be variable, then this math variable function will be called. So, in the math variable function, we have this P as a variable, and there are basically two checks in the math variable function. This variable, the first argument, already exists in binding list. Already exists in binding list. There are two possibilities whether it exists or not. Yes or no. If this variable does not exist in this third argument binding list, then we can, we should just extend the binding. Extend the binding. Extend binding means enclose that value at the variable using maybe we can call the less function in order to enclose that variable and the value in a less enclose the variable and the value in a less and insert that pair into the answer variable b or binding okay. insert that pair a variable and value into the answer variable binding and return this value in the second check if the variable already exists <coughs> we will be following the yes part Yes, the variable already exists in the binding list. Then we should check the function is checking whether the old value is equal to the new value. What is the new value? This second argument is the new value. And where it is currently being bound. Okay? And what is the old value which is already binded with variable in the binding list? That will be the old value. This is the new value. If the old value and new values are same. We have a yes part and we have a no part. If they are same, then return the binding list as it is. Return the answer variable. Return the binding B as it is. No need to extend that binding. The variable is already bounded with the same value and no need to bound it again. But if the new value and old value are different, they are not same, then we should return false, nil, the matching is not possible, the answer will be false. So this function is, there are basically three possible outputs of this function. One is the extended binding, when the value and the variables are enclosed in the list and the second is the answer variable. Or it will return the existing binding as it is, without extending it, but it is still true, the answer is still true. Or it will return nil, means false, the matching is not possible, the answer will be false. So this is the math variable function, the flow chart of the math variable function, this is the behavior of variable p function, variable p function will be one statement in list code and command and 
सिंबल बी एट्स आर्ग्यूमेंट एट्स आर्ग्यूमेंट एज ए सिंबल एंड एट्स फर्स्ट कैरेक्टर ऑफ दैट आर्ग्यूमेंट दैट सिंबल एज ए क्वेश्चन मार्क इट इज जस्ट वन लाइन स्टेटमेंट ठीक है सो दिस इज दी बिहेवियर ऑफ दी वेरी वर्क नोट डाउन दिस पॉइंट्स देन वी विल स्टार्ट ट्रेसिंग ऑफ दी पैटर्न